people from complex trauma create what they hate, or they create what they're trying to avoid, or they create the opposite of what they want to happen. And it happens all the time, and, and a common question is, why do I do that? So before I answer that, let me just kind of set the stage by painting this backdrop. People from complex trauma grow up in environments where there's lots of danger, or where their needs aren't met, or where there's many violations of love. So there's lying, there's abuse, there's not, there isn't justice. All of those things are happening. And they hate that aspect of their childhood. And they never want to see that happen in their life again. They want their needs met, etc. And so they, they start out with a determination, I'm never going to be abandoned again. I'm never going to be disrespected again. I'm never going to be lied to again. And then they move into adult life and they end up being abandoned again and disrespected again. And it happens over and over. So they create, without realizing it, the very environment that, cre that ends up creating what they've been trying to avoid or the thing that they hate. So let me give you a couple examples just to help you understand it. So somebody that's been abandoned goes, that is the worst emotional experience to go through being abandoned. Makes you feel like you don't matter at all. I never want that to happen again. So they get in a relationship, determine that they'll never be abandoned, but what they then do is they're super needy or they test the person all the time or they try to control the person all the time. And after a while, the other person goes, I'm done with this. And they walk out of the relationship and the person feels abandoned again. Or I've had so many people say to me, I grew up and I said, I'm never going to be like my dad. My dad was an addict. My dad had anger issues. My dad was in jail periodically. And they are determined not to become their dad. And when they hit adult life, they're an addict, they're in jail, and they got anger issues. Or, I don't want a husband like my last husband. So I'm going to find a new husband who's not going to be like my last husband. And they, they date and they end up married to somebody that they think is totally opposite of their last husband. And then they find out he's very much like their last husband. Or, I don't want my kids to make the same bad decisions that I made. And so they start out in parenting to try to make sure their kids don't repeat their mistakes. And they find out 15, 20 years later that their kids have made the same decisions that they made when they were a teenager. They created what they were trying to avoid, what they hate. They created the opposite of what they wanted. So why is that? Well, let me give you some reasons, because there's many different factors that can come to play on why we create what we hate. So the first one is a hyper need. So when a need is not met in a child, they can go in two different directions, extremes. They can sh try to shut that need off, and we'll get back to that in a minute, or it can create a hyper need. I need it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And so let me give you a couple examples. Let's say a child was not validated and we all have a need to be validated. And so when they come to their teen years and adult life, they have this hyper need of wanting to be validated. So they chase people around. Was I good enough? Was I good enough? They're always looking for applause, for pats on the back. And what happens with that hyper need? People get tired of having that person always looking for validation and they stop giving them validation. So the child has a hyper need for validation because they never got it as a child, but what they end up is creating is nobody wants to give them validation exactly what happened when they were a child. Or let's say a person who was never heard. Whenever they tried to explain or give their opinion, nobody listened to them. So now they're going, I need to be listened to. So whenever they're in a conversation, they over-talk, they over-explain, they talk too much. They 
butt in to get heard. And after a while, people go, enough with this person. I'm not even listening to them. So now they're not heard again. They created what they are trying to avoid. Or a person who was never understood. Nobody took the time to understand where they're coming from. So that hurts. And now today they go, I need to be understood. And so now they over-explain everything. Whenever they think somebody doesn't understand them, they chase them around saying, let me explain, let me explain, let me explain. <clears throat> and pretty soon people are tired of that. And so now they end up not being understood again because nobody wants to listen to their never-ending explanations. Or let's say a child was made to feel stupid all the time. So now they think the thing that I need to do in order to not be perceived as stupid is to give very academic answers, to share my opinion all the time. But after a while, people go, I'm tired of listening to this person, and they get treated as if they're stupid again. So that can happen over and over. So those, that hyper-need situation can set a person up to not get that need met. Exactly what happened when they were a child. But then there's another part to this need thing. So sometimes when you shut that need off, you don't even think it's a need and you just think you have other needs, but you don't understand that that deep, deep need trumps all of the lesser needs in your life. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you were rejected and abandoned. That hurts like crazy. But you just shut that off and you basically went to, I don't need people. I don't care about people. I'm going to isolate. I'm never going to let people see the real me. I am going to wear masks. I am going to put up walls so that nobody can get close enough to hurt me again. And so you think my need is to be self-sufficient. My need is to be liked by people and to wear masks and to have walls and not be authentic. All of those things, those are my needs, but you don't understand that your deep, deep need is to connect, to be authentic. And so you live in isolation, but now you feel a deep loneliness, a deep longing to be loved. Those two deep needs of connection and love are not being met by your solution to never being rejected or abandoned again. And that desire to be loved will cause you to seek out relationships. It will cause you to miss red flags in relationships and get into relationships with unsafe people, and before you know it, you're getting hurt and abandoned and rejected again. So not understanding the deep, deep needs of the human being, needs that many have turned off because of early wounds, those still will ultimately trump everything else. 